Welcome to my tutorial on creating end grain cutting boards. The boards in the photo are just some of the possibilities for boards that you can create with the steps I've outlined in this tutorial. Creating your own patterns for the boards is as easy as laying out a grid of equal sized squares that is 17 squares across and 17 squares top to bottom. Each square is 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch in the finished boards. The finished boards will measure 12 and 3 quarter inches by 12 and 3 quarter inches. I made mine 1 and 1 quarter inch thick. I designed the patterns using paint program in my computer. Or you can use a CAD program that allows color fill. Grid paper with color pencils will work, but making changes is difficult. Once you've decided on a pattern, count the squares of each color representing the desired wood species in one half of the pattern plus the center row. Figure on one board foot of stock for each 10 squares. This plan will yield three individual boards. The individual pieces of stock are cut to 10 inches long, primarily for the purpose of milling the stock as you can't run small one and a half or three inch pieces of stock through the planer. Look closer at the pattern and you'll see that the top half is a mirror image of the bottom half that has been flipped left to right. Therefore you only need to create pieces for half of the pattern. The center row does not repeat but the work pieces are the same length and there will be some waste left over from the unused glue up strips or create pieces for the entire pattern to make six identical boards. Begin cutting and milling your stock. Rough cut the stock to 10 inches long and rip to widths that can be accommodated at your jointer. Run one face through the jointer. Now run the pieces through the planer with the jointed face down, making the pieces parallel and plane them to a thickness of three quarters of an inch. I recommend checking each piece with dowel calibers to confirm that they are exactly three quarters of an inch. Detecting variations in thickness now will save much problems and frustrations later. Once all the pieces required to create your pattern are ripped, you're ready to lay them out row by row in the order they will be glued up in. Using your pattern as a guide, lay the pieces out row by row, one on top of the other, with the 3 quarter inch milled faces vertical and facing each other as shown here. Remember, you only have to create one half of the pattern plus the center row to make three boards. Each glued up row will be milled to three quarters of an inch later. When you're sure the rows of stock are in the correct order, glue them up one row at a time, keeping them in the same order. I lay the pieces on their sides except for the first one and spread generous amount of glue with a roller on one side only. Rotate and assemble the pieces applying good clamping pressure. Consistent clamping pressure is important or the pattern may not align correctly. Once the glue ups have cured, remove them from the clamps and scrape and plane one side reasonably flat in preparation for milling. Now plane the glue ups to 3 quarters of an inch. Be sure and alternate sides so you get both sides of the glue up good and flat. Next, begin cross-cutting the glue ups. First, square up one edge with a cross-cut sled at the table saw. Then set the fence to 1 and 3 eighths inch and cross-cut each glue up into six pieces. Now for the moment of truth. Lay out the pieces in order using your pattern as a guide. 
Carefully align the lines in the pattern and make sure things look good. If there are any alignment problems, this is the time to correct it. This means creating a new glue up row for the problem row or rows. If the proper steps were taken to check the thickness of each milled stock, there shouldn't be any problem. Next, you're ready to glue up the cutting boards. The glue up procedure is the same as before. You can add calls to each side of the board to keep the pattern in alignment, or just glue up five or six rows at a time to prevent slippage and alignment problems. Wipe the squeeze out and check the rows carefully for proper alignment as you go. When the glue has cured, remove the boards from the clamps and flatten one or both faces with a number 80 cabinet scraper or belt sander. The edges are prone to tear out, so stop short of the opposite edge when scraping. You want to get one side of the board reasonably flat so it doesn't rock on a level surface in preparation for sanding or planing. Next, trim the edges of the board at the table saw to make things even. Trim only as much as you need to and trim equal amounts from each side to keep things with the pattern even. Now you're ready to flatten your cutting boards. A drum sander is the ideal tool for this job. If you don't have a drum sander, you can try your hand with a belt sander or even run them through your planer. I have run ingrained boards through the planer, but you have to be very careful and take the proper steps. You either need to round over all the edges to prevent tear out, or clamp calls, clamp and glue calls to the in-feed and out-feed directions. Be sure and orient the grain of the calls in the proper direction to plane the wood. Plane the boards on each side till they're good and flat. Now to sand and seal the boards. I sanded my boards down to 220 grit. Then I raised the grain by moistening the board with a damp sponge and allow it to dry. Then I sand again down to 220 grit. Then I apply a generous coat of mineral oil all over the board and let it soak in for about 15 minutes. Then wipe it off with paper towels. Allow the oil to dry for a few hours, then repeat the process. Then I allow the boards to dry overnight and I apply a coat of food safe beeswax.